Oh, it's time for another math. Easy. So let's try to discuss, well, just uh, some applications of integrals, basically. Uh, go through them and, and using this net change theorem, which I'll uh, show in a bit. And before I get to this net change theorem, I just want to recap on this the part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. We've seen the video links below, basically. If the function f is continuous on the closed interval a and b, this closed just means that at a and b, f is defined, so it needs to have a value. Uh, you can see video link below on that as well. Basic, basically, then you get this uh, integral here, integral from a to b of f of x dx equals to capital F of b minus f of a, where capital F, the derivative, is equal to th this function here, or f is an antiderivative of f here. But, so, but this one here, we could rewrite this one actually in uh, in a way such that it looks like this. Yeah, we could really write it as this one here, and this is called the net change theorem. I'll explain why the name, uh, it's called that in a second, but if you see all we're doing is just replacing this this little f with the capital F uh, derivative of it. So now this is, so what this is saying is basically the integral from a to b of the derivative of a function is equal to that function at b minus that function at a here. So if, if we let, let's say y is equal to just a function f of x here, then this, the prime here, this derivative y prime is equal to f prime of x. This is, recall that this is just a derivative or the rate of change. Yeah, rate of change of f of x at x here. And then, and then this value here, f of b minus uh, f of a, yeah, is just equal to the net change of f of x, basically from a to b here. You're just subtracting the difference here. And the net here, because remember, this could be decreasing or increasing, so you could have f of b either negative or positive here. We recall from uh, my earlier video, integrals, basically the net area difference here. So then when we have this one here, what this means, we could write this as, yeah, basically we could uh, write it as this or summarize this, this little theorem, basically by the integral of a rate of change, which is this. Uh, the derivative of x is just equal to the net change, so that's where this net change theorem comes into play. And now there's a lot of applications where we could apply this to. Yeah, so this above uh, theorem here, this could be applied to uh, basically uh, all, all of the rates of change in natural and social sciences, and I have listed a, a bunch of examples here. This one, one of them here is volume of water in a reservoir. If this, uh, the change in volume or the water coming in, if you, if you know that, basically yeah, just the rate at which water flows in, then you could basically get the total volume of water left in the reservoir, basically, which is just a net change based on this rate of change here. And also the concentration of a product of, um, and then this other example, basically concentration of a product of a chemical reaction, where this is, this is, or this, uh, this C bracket C, this is just the concentration of the product. So if you have, this is the rate of the reaction, then you can get the total amount of concentration left here, basically, just the net change difference. Yeah, so just a net change of the concentration of the product. And also, if you look at uh, this example, mass of a rod with varying density. So if you have a rod here, basically from A is, is measured from this point here, and B is also measured from here. And then if you have this uh, density function, this rho x, that's uh, usually how density is written, it's just going to be the derivative of m of x, which is just the mass at any point. And if it's varying, then you're just going to have the integral of this varying density just going to be equal to the basically the net change in mass here. Yeah, this net change in mass, or in this case, this would just be the total mass between A and B here. So just the difference between from this total minus the, from, from B, this entire one, from minus this little section here. And also the rate of growth of population here as well. This one here, if you have the population n, if it's changing per, per whatever year, time, uh, months, or whatever, then this just equals to, if you want to find out what the rate of growth, or the basically the net growth change is this one here, or based on this one here. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different kind of, uh, anything that has a rate of change, you could find the total change of it. So basic cost of producing x items here, if this was the marginal cost, you can see the video link below on marginal cost, then basically the total cost increase is basically just the integral of this uh, rate of basically the cost increasing, here, the rate of change of the cost. And also, now this one's interesting, if you look at the position of an object, moving in a straight line of the velocity is this, which is the derivative of, of this uh, position function here. Yes, yeah, so there's the derivative of that one here. Then, then once you do this integral, it's just the displacement or the change, or then uh, basically the integral of the rate of change is going to be equal to the net change of the position here or the displacement here. And now this one is a is a net change. Though the difference here versus uh, distance, which I'll show show below, is uh, basically that this is the net change here. So if you have this velocity. Uh, uh, graph here based on time, there's a t-axis here. So if, as, you, as you can see, if it goes up and down, this case here, 
uh, velocity increases, uh, yeah, so you have a positive velocity and you have a negative velocity. So in this case, if it's a straight line, you're going to be moving forward, then moving backward, and then forward again. In this case, so what the displacement uh, tells us is this net change here. But what if you want to know the total distance here, or the addition of all of these, which would be like something uh, much bigger than just the regular displacement. Well, if you look at the displacement here, remember, it's just the integral is the area under the graph. So this is going to be the area of this one minus this, because it's a negative area. So that's this displacement is a minus there. And then plus this one here. And distance is different. You have to, it, this one's just going to be the addition of all the areas. So this is a plus here. So you're plusing this A2 here. So that, that's the only difference between that and displacement. So total distance traveled is just going to be the integral of the absolute value of uh, the velocity function. And then because you need to consider basically to do the integral, you need to consider when the velocity is less than zero in, uh, in this case here, and then also when velocity is greater than zero separately. Because the integral just, just gives you the net, net change, so you have to do it separately. And also, yeah, basically the velocity, if you want to know the velocity change of a function, is the last, the last little uh, application, it is basically if you, have, if you have the acceleration of a function, then you could get basically the change in velocity over this interval here, just the exact same as, uh, as above here. So now let's look at an example here just to illustrate this, uh, this rate of change theorem here. So basically if a particle moves along a line and it has this velocity function here, v of t equals t squared minus t minus 6 is given in meters per second. Now this uh, part a of it says find displacement during this time. Oh no, during this time of t is a lot greater than 1 up to 4 seconds. And, and then the part b is basically find a total distance traveled at this time period. So now if we look at part a here, the displacement just like from the above theorem is just going to be the integral from well, 1 to 4 of the velocity function here dt. And this, this is just going to equal to s of t minus s, I mean, s of 4, and minus s at 1 here, and then where basically v of t is equal to the derivative of s of t here. So then, yeah, so then basically the position just the, the antiderivative uh, of f of t here. So now we just, just solve this integral here, and then we can get this, this value right here. So we'll just plug this in. So this is 1, 4. Yeah, so this integral t squared minus t minus 6. So then the recall from my... Uh, Antiderivative. I'm mean just the integral uh, examples video. Basically, just to solve this one, we just take the antiderivative of every single one separately. So we're gonna have and put a little bracket like this: t to the three minus divided by three, just antiderivative of it, minus t squared over two, and minus six t here. Because if you take derivative of all these, you're gonna get this one right here. And then from one to four. So then we just plug these values in. And basically, when you, once you uh, plug in the the four here, so you just plug in this this four here minus then uh, for this function here with a one inside here, so you have four cubed or divided by three, etc. For every single t here, and then also this one here. So this one uh, represents s of one, and this represents s of four here. So now we just solve this. We're gonna get yeah. Well, if we simplify this, we get this one here because four cubed is sixty four, four squared sixteen. So I'll just I'll just keep simplifying this one here. Yes, yeah, so if we simplify this further, just just divide this up by uh, 2 is 8, and then times the top and bottom uh, by here by this one 2 over 2, and this one 3 over 3, just so we have a common denominator of 6, and then subtract these, which would be a 2 minus a 3 is a negative 1 over 6. Yes, yeah, so and if you simplify it further, this add these up is going to be negative 32 here, and then this, we just take the negatives out, it's going to be a plus, this is going to be a plus as well here. Yeah, so if you keep simplifying this one, you can put in a calculator, but I just, I just want to solve this uh, manually here. So then uh, this negative 32 plus 6, you get negative 26, put these together, times this by, let's just get a common denominator here, put a 3 over 3, times by 6 over 6 here. Yeah, actually when you simplify it, you get something like this, uh, well, I just give up, so I just put in a calculator here, it doesn't look like it's getting any simpler. You get negative 4.5 here. So this is what the final answer is, and so what this means is, you're going to have a displacement of 4.5 meters. This is to the left here, if you, if you uh, define positive as to the right here. So now if we look at part b, basically the total distance traveled, we have to look at the integral of the absolute value of this function here. So if it's an absolute value, we need to f basically separate the regular integral into two integrals for, the, for whenever you have v of t is greater than or equal to 0 and v of t is less than zero here, or less than equal to if it's continuous function. So yeah, if we write this function, now the v of t here, t squared minus t minus six, if we factor this out, we're gonna actually get something like this, t minus three times by t minus two here. So if you factor it out, if you multiply these out, you're gonna get this one here. So if you have this one here, 
if you set v of t is equal to zero, so you're gonna get equals to t minus three and t minus two here. So in this case, I'm not sure if I'm gonna say this is a plus two here. This is a plus here, this is a plus here. So yeah, you, so you have this one right here. So yeah, because if you multiply these out, you're gonna get t squared and then minus basically yes. It minus a t plus, I mean, minus 60 when you just multiply these out. But basically, uh, what this means now is that when t, yeah, basically when t is equal to zero here, you're going to have a negative here because you just plug in the zero, you're going to get negative six here. Because this is uh, what what uh, matters is this would be negative, this would be positive, but then negative times negative is positive here. So then this is negative all the way up to t is equal to three here. At t equals to three, v of t is going to be equal to zero here, and and uh, and then when when if t is uh, between zero and three, this is this is going to be negative, and this is going to be positive. This is just always positive here. This is just a plus here. So then basically, v of t is uh, is less than equal to zero from basically t is yeah basically from t goes from zero to three, and then for v of t is greater than equal to zero from basically three to four here. So for three to four seconds here. So we have to split them up into two integrals that look like this. Well actually I yeah, made a mistake here. We're not even considering t equals zero. We get t equals one here. So regardless it's still gonna be negative. This is gonna be a one here. So split that up. So from one to three of now V T D T actually to make it absolute value because remember this is gonna be a negative absolute value. I mean this is gonna be negative velocity so we just put a negative here. And then plus this one just gonna be regular uh, three to four of vt, yeah, dt. Yes, yeah, so then if you uh, just do the integral like this, we're gonna have something like this from uh, three to one. Actually, actually, I forgot to do the antiderivatives. So basically, you just put the antiderivatives uh, every once. So you're gonna have two integrals here. So that's that's all you do. And if you solve this one, you're gonna get you're gonna get sixty one over uh, over six. I, I don't wanna solve this. You can just do this by yourself by hand or calculator or whatnot. And this is roughly equal to 10.17 meters here. So this is a total distance traveled. And compare this with the negative 4.5 meters displacement, which just means he traveled left. Well, it's all for now. Hopefully you learned uh, about this uh, net change theorem and then now you can apply it to other other applications. I'm gonna do a lot of examples later videos, but that's all for now. Hopefully you learned and uh, yeah, you can always download these notes and yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution. Let's scroll up a bit more, okay.